Hi, I'm Dr. Brendan Everett. I'm a cardiologist at the Brigham and Women's Hospital here in Boston, Massachusetts. And I wanted to summarize my talk for you, which is called High Sensitivity Cardiac Troponin and uh, as potentially novel tools for risk prediction in ambulatory patients. So uh, novel assays for cardiac troponin have been used uh, for a long time uh, for risk stratification in acute coronary syndromes. Um, recently, uh, more sensitive assays have become available that can now detect circulating cardiac troponin concentrations in healthy people who are not presenting to an emergency department with chest discomfort. And what's been interesting is that even very low concentrations of cardiac troponin, well within the normal range, have been associated with adverse cardiovascular risk, including future myocardial infarction, stroke, cardiovascular death, and heart failure. As a result, uh, people have become interested in using these assays in ambulatory patients and using them potentially to identify patients who are at increased risk and who might benefit from adjunctive therapy. We've looked, and others have looked, both in primary prevention populations, including the Dallas Heart Study, the Cardiovascular Health Study, the Atherosclerosis Risk in Communities Study, and in a large consortium called Biomark Care at many thousands of patients. What we've found is that cardiovascular risk can be uh, accurately predicted with cardiac troponin, and that there are some improvements in risk discrimination and risk prediction, such as the C-statistic and other measures of risk classification, such as the NRI or the IDI. These uh, improvements are small, but are statistically significant. Secondly, there's been interest in using these assays in ambulatory patients with established cardiovascular disease. So for example, patients with existing coronary heart disease. And there have been a number of studies that have shown that cardiac troponin concentrations also predict risk, particularly of cardiovascular death, heart failure, and also myocardial infarction in this population as well. The problem remains is to identifying what specifically we're able to do about the increased risk reflected in the abnormal or uh, detectable concentrations of cardiac troponin. A number of strategies have been tested in the PEACE trial, uh, which was a randomized trial of an ACE inhibitor. Uh, the investigators found that random allocated uh, therapy with an ACE inhibitor did not actually improve your outcome if you had an abnormal troponin any more than it did if you had a normal troponin. Similarly, we're a, we were able to look in a secondary prevention population of patients with type 2 diabetes and stable ischemic heart disease. Uh, that study was called the bari 2 d trial, and in bari 2 d patients were randomized to have prompt coronary revascularization or alternatively, optimal medical therapy for their chronic stable coronary artery disease. The overall trial did not show a benefit of randomization to an invasive or early revascularization strategy. We hypothesized that using cardiac troponin would potentially identify a subgroup of patients who would benefit from the prompt revascularization. Unfortunately, that was not the case, and what we found was that the outcomes were the same regardless of whether or not the baseline concentrations of cardiac troponin were above the upper reference limit or in the normal range. Finally, uh, we've also been able to look at whether statin therapy affects outcome in patients uh, with a wide range of cardiac troponin concentrations. We used data from the JUPITER trial, which was a large randomized trial of resuvastatin, 20 milligrams, in patients without prior cardiovascular disease. And we found a couple of interesting things. First of all, as you might uh, anticipate given what I've told you already, cardiac troponin concentrations were closely correlated with the absolute risk of having a major first cardiovascular event within the JUPITER trial. The higher your troponin, the higher your risk. We also found that resuvastatin allocated randomly had a substantial effect on your risk of those events. In fact, the reduction in risk was about 40 to 50 percent across all categories of cardiac troponin. In other words, there was no interaction with your baseline troponin. The effect of the resuvastatin was consistent regardless of your baseline troponin. However, the patients who had a very high baseline troponin were also at higher absolute risk. And since their relative risk reduction was the same, they actually ended up having a higher absolute risk reduction when they were allocated to troponin therapy. And this translated into a relatively small number needed to treat. In fact, 
In the highest category of cardiac troponin, we only needed to treat 18 patients for an estimated five years to prevent one major cardiovascular event. On the other hand, on the low end of the cardiac troponin uh, spectrum, we had to treat more than 60 patients for five years to prevent one major adverse cardiovascular event. In summary then, I think what we found is that cardiac troponins are strong predictors of future cardiovascular risk, but exactly what to do about an abnormal or even a detectable but normal cardiac troponin is not totally clear. We have uh, estimated people's risk, but have not yet been able to identify what specific therapy might help improve their outcome.